Hello folks, today I'm just going to run through with you a short tutorial on how to change the front disc pads on the GS. It's a simple enough job and you don't need to go to a garage to get it done as long as you follow this simple process. If you like the video please hit the like button and maybe even smash that subscribe button. The tools you'll need will be a T30 hex, a 13mm spanner or socket, as you say I've got an associated ratchet spanner, a torque wrench that will do at least 24 newton meters, a pair of swan nosed pliers, a pot, an old toothbrush, a wire brush, and you might even need an old flat headed screwdriver. Let's get to it. When changing the front brake pads, first thing to do is remove this clip. Put it somewhere safe. I use the top of a washing up or washing liquid tub. Then what you need is a T30 hex to undo this bolt here. and then pull it out. Remove the brake pad retaining spring. And if you notice at the top of the brake pad retaining spring, there's an arrow that tells you which way the spring is to go in. So it sits in like that. Then simply remove the old pads As you can see, they are proper mullered. Now there is no way I'm going to get the new pads in the gap in here. So what I now have to do is undo these two bolts, which are 13s. They will be stiff. On the left hand side of the bike, you have the retaining clip for the ABS sensor. You don't have that sensor on the right hand disc pad. Undo those bolts. Get that out of the way. Then gently remove the brake assembly itself. Now, what you need to do is using an old toothbrush, just clean away all the brake debris and any other crud that's assembled up around your pistons. Whatever you do, try not to breathe in this dust as it will have some rather nasty compounds involved in it. Now what you want to do is move the pistons back into the main assembly. You might need quite a bit of force and pressure to do that. 
if the pistons don't go, what I can suggest is using the old pads, place the old pads in as they would be if you were actually using the brakes. So with the knackered material on the inside, like that. And then using a screwdriver or a metal bar, gently prise them back. This will drive the pistons back into their housing. That's them like that. Once the pistons are back, a reasonable distance back, you can then remount the brake assembly. So put the brake assembly back on, put the bolts back in, not forgetting the ABS sensor mounting bracket. These two bolts need to be torqued to 24 newton meters. 24 newton meters. Lock her off. There we go. Now comes reassembly. It's a good opportunity to tidy up and clean up the likes of the retaining spring and the pad pin. So for that, all I tend to do is just use a wire brush and just give it a gentle clean up like that that's the spring done have a look at the retaining pin and there was on this one it's got a bit of pitting from some minor corrosion so just clean that up as well you can use a bit of 3m cloth as well if you don't have a wire brush you don't want to be too vicious with this all you're doing is just cleaning it up then you get your new brake pads you then put them in so that the abrasive material faces into the disc itself so that one slots in there that one slots in there Next, put the spring in and it faces like that. Now, get your pin and gently add a little bit of either copper grease or in this case I'm using lithium grease. Place that in to one, and before I go any further, I'm going to discard my rubber gloves as they've got grease and crud all over them. Okay, so with the pads fitted, all you then do take the retaining plate, it has a small notch in the bottom which fits into a small groove at the bottom of the caliper itself. This broad plate rests on these two lugs and then this U indentation lines up with the holes 
in the actual pads so you feed that in there that sits on there like that then add a bit of pressure get your pin feed the pin through and you'll feel it bite the screw thread tighten it up you don't need to lean on it when you're tightening it up just so that it stops and it's hand tight like so and then the retaining clip simply goes back on there do the same on the other side of the wheel and you have completed a brake pad change that's the front brake pads changed one thing I will stress before you take the bike out on the road pump your front brake when you've pulled the pistons back into the housing you will have no brake pressure on the brake at all so all you need to do is just pump the brake and you can actually watch the piston gently coming out and then seating itself against the new brake pad keep pumping and then you'll feel the resistance and then what I would suggest you do is take the bike off the centre stand walk it backwards and forwards and just play with the front brake until you're happy that you have got front brake pressure what you do not want to do is do this and then go straight on the road because when you pull the brake in there will be nothing there Okay, folks, I hope that's been of some use. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you the next time. Be safe and keep rubber side down.